Hey Lennies, welcome back to the channel. Yes, as you can see, I'm in a different section of the house today. I thought I would try something new, although it is quite comfortable to do this on top of my bed most of the time, and that setup has become such a staple of the channel. But, you know, let me know in the comments below if you like this setup as well. Maybe I'll kind of rotate between the two. I'm always just looking for new ways to spice things up. I've got my Selena mug here for those of you who like Selena. Now I searched far and wide and there's not a single video on YouTube on this topic. Now there were a couple videos on how to kind of trap a, a wild rabbit for the purpose of hunting and things like that, which this video is not about whatsoever. So again, I will say it, this video is about how to catch a stray domestic rabbit for the purpose of rescuing it. Because rabbits are prey animals, they really can't survive in the wild for very long. Um, and there's a big misconception that because wild rabbits can, that domestic rabbits can also, and that's a falsehood. So as prey animals, they are susceptible to predators, to being hit by a car, diseases, or just struggling to fend for themselves in general. While a bunny may be able to survive a few weeks, you know, maybe a month or two if it's lucky enough, uh, it probably won't be able to survive in the wild beyond that. There are quite a few logistics that go into this procedure, so it's important to really plan this out before you do it. Sometimes people think that they can just spontaneously show up and catch a rabbit, and <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, it's, it's a little more work than that. So the first thing you wanna do is try to identify whether the rabbit is a domestic rabbit or a wild rabbit. Now, wild rabbits tend to have what's known as an agouti colored coat. And it's kind of this brown coat that's maybe ticked with gray or very neutral colors that will help them camouflage themselves. Domesticated rabbits, on the other hand, tend to have all sorts of crazy colored coats because humans have bred them to be that way. Sometimes you'll get rabbits with you know, spots or stripes. An angora or a lion head will be very fluffy. Sometimes they'll have blue eyes as well, and that is definitely not a wild rabbit feature. That is something that has been created through genetic breeding. I do wanna mention that sometimes the color of the coat is not always the biggest indicator because there are domestic rabbits that have the agouti colored coat, which is why it's important to look at other indicators such as the face shape, body size, tail size, ear shape. So I really do encourage you to Google some of the differences so that you can make the correct assessment. If the rabbit happens to be wild, leave it alone. Or if the wild rabbit is injured, please call your local wildlife center. Now, if the rabbit is domestic, there's two reasons it's probably a stray. One is it has escaped from an outside enclosure, which is why I really don't recommend housing your rabbits outside. The second reason is that the rabbit was intentionally set free, or as I like to call it, just dumped. The rabbit was dumped by someone who didn't want it anymore or didn't want to deal with it. So the next thing I want to suggest, if you are not experienced with handling rabbits or catching stray rabbits, I really, really recommend you reach out to your local rabbit rescue. They are out there rescuing rabbits day in and day out from all sorts of circumstances. So they tend to be very experienced. They tend to have the tools, but I know a lot of places don't have a rabbit rescue near them. And in that case, you can reach out to a local animal shelter, ASPCA, Humane Society, or animal control. Now, when you do this, you're gonna wanna bring quite a few different things with you just because you don't know which mechanisms are gonna work or not. So let's create a checklist here of the tools you'll need. First, bait, such as sweets, leafy greens, and depending on the weather, any non-perishables like pellets. I recommend something very aromatic like banana, cut apples, or carrots. You'll need water and a bowl as strays are often dehydrated, a carrier or a kennel to transport the rabbit in, sanitary gloves for when handling the rabbit, a metal X-pen also known as a puppy pen, usually more than one is recommended, a pop-up pen, these are great in the sense that they're very portable, a large blanket or towel, and lastly, a humane animal trap. You can either buy one or create your own, which I'll show you how to do. However, using a caged trap should be a last resort and I'll get into why a bit later. 
The next thing I really recommend is doing this at the very least with a second person, but it's even better if you can have a third person helping you in the process. When I last rescued a rabbit, I had three people on the team doing this. And you'll see when rabbit rescues do this sort of thing, they often send uh, more than one person out to the site just because they can run so fast, they can jump so high, just beyond our human capabilities. And sometimes, not all the time, they can be a little less approachable than say a domestic dog or a domestic cat. Now I've also encountered plenty of cases where the rabbit is very socialized. It's not afraid of humans. So usually that's an easy catch and you don't have to put a lot of effort into it. Okay, next, time of the day is so crucial in this process because rabbits are crepuscular as we know. So that means that they tend to be most active at dawn and dusk. During the day, they're likely to be hiding out, sleeping somewhere, trying to avoid predators. So if you can, try to do this in the morning or when the sun is setting. Now, where to look? If you always see the rabbit kind of visiting the same spot, it's likely that that is where you're gonna find them again. But it's also really important, guys, I have to stress this, to check under cars, under decks, porches, trees, any tunnel systems, because rabbits like to hide. All right, now before I show you guys how to do this stuff, let's get straight into the disclaimers. Please note the following footage are demonstrations that took place in a highly supervised and fenced off environment. I do not encourage any reenactments of these demonstrations except in the event of trying to rescue a stray domestic rabbit. These methods are not always guaranteed to work and I encourage you to always use the utmost caution during their implementation. Also bear in mind that our model Lennon was very cooperative during this process and that she is not a representation of how every stray bunny could react in these circumstances. For the first method, you can try encircling the rabbit using the exercise pens. The more pens, the better, as you can create much larger circles for a standoffish rabbit. This method works best when they are cornered or hiding under an object, like a car or a bush. The next option is to set up the exercise pens in a half circle at least 10 feet away from the rabbit and attempt to herd them from the opposite side into the enclosure. Then work quickly to fully close the gap. In this next method is where the blanket comes in handy. If you can get at least within a few feet from the rabbit, you can quickly toss the blanket over them and try to secure it to the ground. The pop-up pen method might work a bit better with an approachable rabbit, but you simply place the bait in the pen and wait for them to enter the pen. Then you should work quickly to block the exit or zip it up. Alternatively, you can apply the blanket method to the pop-up pen by flipping it upside down and tossing it over the rabbit. Finally, you can create your own humane rabbit trap using very simple tools. All you'll need is to tie a long string to a stick with a V-shaped tip. Then wedge a large box or a container into the stick where it will remain balanced. I know my box is on the smaller side, unfortunately, as it's all I had. Place your bait inside. Once the rabbit enters the box, tug the string as fast as you can to trap it inside. Also, can Lennon just get a round of applause, guys, for her acting skills? She is so cute in this whole segment, and I'm freaking out. And finally, always remember when around the rabbit to act as nonchalant as possible. Utilize your bait and let the rabbit come to you. Don't try to chase or hover over them, as that will appear threatening. When picking up a rabbit, use one hand to support the hindquarters and the other hand to support the midsection. I'm personally not the biggest fan of using the caged animal traps for a couple reasons. And one of them is you have to monitor them like every 15 to 20 minutes. You can't just set up the trap in the morning, go to work, go about your day, and then come back late at night and check on it. The rabbit could really die in that time frame from fright, being taunted by other animals around it. There's also the very slight chance the rabbit could get injured just trying to escape or you know, having the door kind of slam on top of it by accident. You could also trap an unintended animal. Unless you're gonna physically be watching that trap all the time, then I just don't recommend it. Now, once the rabbit is in your possession, the first thing you need to do is A, get it to your local rabbit rescue, especially if you can't afford any medical bills yourself. 
if you do have the means to take the rabbit to the vet because maybe you want to adopt the bunny or you want to foster it until you find it a home, then that's great as well. Regardless of which option you choose, the bunny needs to be checked out by a medical professional. So you want to make sure it's not diseased, it's not malnourished, it's not on the verge of dying, it doesn't have GI stasis, it could have dental problems, it could have injuries. You really don't know what this rabbit has been through. Sometimes the rabbit might be microchipped and you want to see if the rabbit does belong to someone. Most vets will also be able to assess whether the rabbit has been spayed or neutered. Nowadays when a rabbit gets spayed or neutered it's very common for a vet to tattoo a little mark on their stomachs to indicate that they have been spayed or neutered. Otherwise with a male you'll be able to see if the testicles are still intact or not and then with females it's a little harder to assess whether they've been spayed or not without the tattoo. Sometimes you can look for a scar. Other times it does have to be done through exploratory surgery, unfortunately, or through an MRI. But if the rabbit is not fixed, it's very important to get them fixed. And again, this is where a rabbit rescue or a shelter will come in and take care of that. If you've decided you wanna keep the rabbit or you wanna foster the rabbit, obviously when you bring it home, set up a nice safe area for it to be in away from any other animals in the house, hopefully you don't have any, that's the best case scenario, but if you do, away from any dogs or cats, anything that might stress it out. I'll go ahead and link my video on how to properly set up a rabbit playpen. You'll definitely need to provide it with a litter box, hay, water, and the list goes on. And I would just monitor the rabbit over the next week or so, make sure it's eating, using the bathroom. Just because anytime you bring a rabbit into a new environment, an unfamiliar environment, you never know how it's gonna react. So those are my tips for you guys on how to catch a stray domestic rabbit for the purpose of rescuing it. There are probably some other methods and such that I didn't bring up in this video just because maybe I'm not aware of them. So I do welcome friendly suggestions or any other tips and pointers that you guys might have. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that jazz and I'll see you all soon. Bye.